Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Now, I'm Sam Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin's son is mine. He gets on TV and says, I'm a piece of shit. Never there was. I was never there for him. This and that. Okay. I said, uh, you remember when you were small? When I told you, um, do you see what they saying about me? Do you see it's true? You said no. And what did I tell you in front of your grandmother? Love your mother. Whatever you say, whatever you do, love your mother. And I took you back. So, did I mislead you? What did I do? I taught you how to love a woman. I can't teach you how to treat a woman because every woman wants to be treated differently. But I can tell you how to respect one. You understand? Every woman doesn't want her shoes tied. Every woman doesn't want you to open her car door up for it. Every woman is different. For, for me to tell you how to love a woman, I'm telling you how to love the woman that I'm with. See the difference? Any man that tells you how to love a woman, he's telling you how to love the woman he's with or the woman that he messed up with. Because that's how she want to be loved. So every time you go out and you talk about what your woman like, the next man is listening. And he's going to do what she likes. Same thing on vice versa. So I can never tell you how to love a woman. I can tell you how to respect one. Okay? Now all this in social media, do you think I give a rat's ass what people think about me? God embarrass you. You can be in all white going to a, 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 a good affair because you're on God's payroll he'll make you slip and fall and fall in mud you can have the nicest car in the block washed it whole nine sitting here talking to him, the prettiest girl on the block here come a rain cloud just over your car he will embarrass you so if God will embarrass you to get paid why do you care what other people think about you I'm getting paid by God so you can go on the news and tell them anything you want to tell them I care less and if they say well you need me Excuse me? Okay. So if God was to kill you, right? He killed you today. I'm lost? I'm lost because you're dead? So in other words, the world is over, right? Because you're dead. I don't need you. People keep telling you that. Oh, what you going to do without me? Shit, live. I don't need you. Once you, once you go, the world gonna stop. Oh, because so and so is dead, the world is over. Yeah, you keep thinking that. You keep thinking that. You keep thinking that you that you're that important that they need you. Keep thinking that. It might be the best thing that ever happened when you do leave. 
Remember that. So, always, always, don't care what people think because God pays you for embarrassing you. And that's real talk. He will pay you for being embarrassed. He will pay you for being in poverty. He will pay you for sleeping with rats. He will pay you for, for all the things you're going through. He'll pay you. So don't care what people say. And you think I'm gonna get on national TV and apologize? Help, apologize for what? I don't need you. Because you what, you, you go buy my albums, you go buy my music, I'm supposed to apologize to you? Think about it. When God will embarrass you, he will embarrass you. There are people that was rich. Stock market crashed. They broke. They went from a yacht to a canoe and can't afford an org. His, his employees got more money than him. He will embarrass you. And you're gonna apologize to the people that 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 thinks that they better than you? What's wrong with you? Other words, they are God, so you apologize to them. They didn't do it, God did it. Because he's paying you. Remember that. I do not need people around me. No, let me rephrase that. I don't want people around me. I need to have people of God around me. It's a difference. I don't want nobody around me. When I come outside, if I, if I come outside and don't have a news camera around me, don't have the people surrounding me, that's a beautiful day. But when I got to come outside and deal with you all, it's a terrible day. It's a terrible day. What I want to deal with you for? You ain't nothing but the devil. So now I got to, I got to go through this maze of life with you. So instead of me having a straight shot on the interstate, there's a detour. I got to get off and got to deal with you. You are a bad construction site. So in other words, I got to slow down and I got to obey your laws to get by. You see what I'm saying? You are a construction site detour. That's all you are. You a detour. So now I'm on the interstate, have no one around me. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Here you come, construction site. Slow down. I'm saying to myself, shit, go somewhere else. Build, go, go, go work on another interstate. But that's God. God make construction sites on a road that you're traveling on to make you stronger. He pays you. He pays you. And every time you have music and there's someone talking bad about you, that's nothing but a construction site detour on an interstate you're traveling on. When you come outside, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. Let me show you. There's nothing in front of me. I'm looking at my rear view mirror. There's nothing behind me. It's a beautiful day. I have no detours. I'm on a straight path to God. Straight path. But as soon as you have something 
Here come detours. Here come detours. So be thankful of being alone. Be thankful you don't have detours. Be thankful they're not resurfacing the road in front of you. Be thankful. Because God just showing you that you don't need them. That's why he makes you alone to show you that you don't need them. All you need is me. So when he takes people out your life, yeah, it hurts. It hurts your flesh. But he's showing you, you don't need them. Depend on me. Be thankful. So now, let's look at, let's look at my social media page. Now, once again, I'm a billionaire. I got billions of dollars. Me, Jay-Z, 50 Cent, Rick Ross, we toasting bottles and social media. My beautiful Brett. I'm not, I'm not downgrading you. I love you, Brett. But you're the only news person that I know of the name. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, the brat comes and says, uh, you missed countless appointments. They are, you know, they're talking about you. I can't worry about that. They want me. They don't need me. They want me. They want to use me for their benefit. I don't, I don't hate them for wanting me, but I need to be around people that need me for me to grow. People that want me takes from me. It's a difference. You know, when 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 that woman touched Jesus' clothes, she took virtue from Jesus. Every time that somebody wants me, I need to get healed. You know, every time a rich person uh, goes around a person at once, he got to make more deals. So every time a person wants me, I got to be healed. I got to make more deals. See what I'm saying? I don't need to be around people that want me. I need to be around people that need me. Because a person that needs me is going to elevate me. My daughter needs me. My wife needs me. My employees needs me. So when I go into the office and I see my employees, I see the 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 the, the, the smile they have for the week from the weekend of being with their family members. I see them buying lunch. I see I see them not bringing a lunchbox. I see them calling Grubhub. I see them driving new cars. They need me. So I'm gonna work harder. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna work harder. The person that wants me drains me. It's a difference. It's a difference. When you're in trouble, when you're in trouble, you need God. You need him. And he and he thrives off your broken contract spirit. It makes him stronger. But when you want him, you're going to take things from him. He's not going he's not going to bless you because of your wants. He wants you to need him. He wants you to call out his name in a spirit that's 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 just unbelievable of love. You understand? When your baby comes out that womb, it needs you. That child is touching your face, playing in your face. Because it needs you. 
And if that's not energy for you being a parent, something wrong. Something wrong. I want to be around needs, not want. I have, what, four wives? They need me. I come home, they driving in their uh, electric Mercedes Benz. They plug up to get uh, get a charge from the go out. They come home. It's a beautiful thing. They need me. Their speech is different. My speech is different. When they open that refrigerator up, something is inside. Their speech is different. When they go to a bank account, when you gotta when you gotta check your balance before you before you take something out, you're broke. Remember that. When you gotta go to when you gotta go to the bank and check your balance before you get money out, you're broke. I don't care if you're a millionaire or if you're a billionaire. If you gotta check that bank account balance before you get money out. You're broke. And if you got to budget, you're broke. Wealthy person do not check their bank account balance. They got too much to count. Remember that. When you wealthy, you got too much to count. You don't got no counting machine. You don't got that. Because every day, you got to keep counting, you can keep counting. It's a difference. When you're wealthy, you don't check your bank account balance. You check what's coming in. You don't check what you got. You check what's coming in. And you budget off what's coming in. If, if, I'm, if I'm wealthy and I got $2 million coming in, I know today I can't spend no more than $2 million. See the difference? If I'm a, if I'm a rapper and I'm doing a show, I'm on tour, I made a, I made a million dollars off tour or a show, I know today I can't spend more than a million dollars. That's wealthy. When Jay-Z sells out uh, Met Stadium when Beyonce sells out a stadium so when they go shopping they go shopping based off what they made today they don't check their balance when you got employees you base you base paying your employees of what you made today if your employees uh, payroll is um, 100 grand for the week, you know, if you made less than 100 grand, hey, somebody got to go. You see what I'm saying? That's wealthy. Broke check balance. Remember that. Broke, you check your balance. Right now, last year, I check balances. Now, I check account receivable. I care less about the balance. I care less about the balance. I know, I know exactly what I got coming in. And if I had, if I had $10 million coming in today, and I only spent one, I know I got nine million. I know I got nine million. So tomorrow, okay, for the week, oh, I made uh, one million. I spent a hundred thousand. Oh, I ain't spent nothing. I got 10 million for the week. See what I'm saying? That's wealthy. That is wealth. Do you think um, Elon Musk checks his, got a, a, got, got a money machine? Do you really think that he's counting his money? 
You count his money. You worry about how much money he got. He care less. That's the reason why he works so hard because he goes by what he makes today. Oh, I only made a million dollars a day. I gotta work a little harder. Because I spent 10 million yesterday. That's wealth. You understand? So now, when you go to an employee in the natural, and not employed by God, when you get up and go to work, you go to work to perform, you get a paycheck. You complain about the environment. You go to the boss and you say, well, I don't like this person. I don't like that person. That person mistreats me. So now your natural boss pleases you. He either separates you from the problem or he tries to comfort the problem. Well, employed by God, you can complain all you want. You can complain all you want. And it ain't gonna change. Because you're getting paid for services. You're getting paid to get embarrassed. So why would he change the situation if he's paying you to embarrass you? Think about it. If he's paying you to embarrass you, why would it change? So, my billion dollars came from embarrassment. My billion dollars came from being alone. My billion dollars came from um, neglecting you. That's where my wealth come from. Now that I got it, I still got the mentality of neglecting you. So that's what pays me, neglecting you. So you get mad because I'm doing what pays me. So if I take my money and I give to the poor, who do the poor see? Every time I come around, they see me. They ain't looking for God. They looking for me. I ain't God. God embarrass you. If a man embarrass you, you ready to fight. That's pride. Well, you can't fight God because he will embarrass you. He'll make you wish you was dead sometimes. And that's being real. So stop judging people by what you see. Because they got paid for being embarrassed. You don't think Ice Cube didn't get embarrassed being a child? You don't think Oprah Winfrey got embarrassed being a child? You don't think Jay-Z got embarrassed? Listen to the music. Um, I, got a million, I got a million problems. And a woman ain't one. So, obviously, obviously, he been embarrassed. Look at 50 Cent. Patiently waiting. Obviously, he been embarrassed. Look at Dr. Dre. Um, all I want to do is uh, kiss my sisters. All I want to do is have sex with you. Obviously, he been embarrassed. He didn't have no woman because he didn't have no money. He was embarrassed. Friends always being around women. 
he was embarrassed. Um, you know, it's a lot of people. Even Tyler Perry, if I'm not understanding, Tyler Perry lived in his car. He was embarrassed living in Atlanta. He was embarrassed. People said, why don't you go get a job? Go get a job, why are you living in your car? Go get um, Tiffany Haddish. She living in her car, she was embarrassed. People saying, you're a fool for living in your car. What you gonna get a job and go get an apartment? See? But she was getting paid by God. I showed you me living in a house, sewer water, busted. I gotta walk in two or three inches of water. I showed you I had to walk through three foot of water back to Essex County Jail to try to get my ID. Embarrassed. I showed you I walk from Richmond, Virginia all the way to the Northern Neck to get a job. And once I get there, they're not hiring. I got embarrassed. I got embarrassed lots of times. People laugh. God still counting his money. See what I'm saying? You don't know what they've been through. I'm just posting on social media in which you think I'm crazy, but I'm showing you I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid. So that's just life, you know? Be thankful, be thankful. I have no detours in front of me. Sometimes it can be scary. When I get on the interstate, matter of fact, the first time in 2004, no, 2005, 2005, um, I was going to uh, Snyder National, living in Charlotte. I'll never forget it. You know, I was smoking weed, man. Going to apply for a bank, selling the plasma. Go get me a nickel bag of weed or a dime bag of weed. Stressed out. Pond everything. Stressed out. Go look for a job, overqualified. Stressed out. Call Snyder, and they said, uh, "Come on in to our um, facility, our terminal." So I come in the terminal. Didn't know a damn thing about trucking, but I knew how to change gears from running that motor grader. I knew about that clutch. I knew how to drive a manual car, and I'm seeing all these guys with pot bellies sitting in a terminal watching a, a TV. I came back to my wife and daughter and said, man, if I ain't driving trucks, I'm going home. I didn't know they had a log book. I told my wife, shit, I'm gonna drive a truck, smoke me a blunt. Cause all I wanted to do was flatbed back then. I smoke a blunt, I could drive a hit of California. Didn't know they didn't have a law book. So, my um, brothers from Charlotte saying, you gotta learn the business. It's more than what you think it is. Then, I, um, I called Snyder again and said, um, I wanna drive, but you know, I got a wife and daughter at home. You know, I'm, I'm going to Plaza Bank. I'm selling my plasma. You know, I got to make sure that I can provide for them. So, 
They told me to uh, get a chair before you come in. Get a chair, sit in that chair for three hours at a time. Only get up that chair, you gotta use the bathroom. And you must eat. Now, she didn't say what I gotta eat, but you must eat. So now, me learned the business. I really didn't learn the business, the trucking business, until I went into moving. When I went to JB Hunt, I knew the business. I knew the business. I had a supply, demand, and equilibrium of what I needed. I knew the business. Let me explain something to you. When I went to, I was uh, staying with my aunt, rest in peace, my aunt Evelyn Cupid. And Cheryl, they rode with me the whole time in Jersey and in Richmond. They rode with me. I, I promised them I was gonna buy them a house, but they didn't live long enough for me to get them a house. So well, I was gonna give that house to their daughter, to they, uh, Cheryl's daughter, Ebony. I promised them I'm gonna get them a house. They looking in heaven, looking down at me. Rest in peace. I didn't forget about you. Cause you rode with me in poverty. You rode with me when I was on the road. When I, when I came off the road, I came to you, asked what you need. I would, I would gave you my whole paycheck and you knew it because that's how I was raised. But me, me get off that. Rest in peace, Cheryl and Aunt Evelyn. I love you. I always will love you. You're like a mother to me. It hurt my soul when I couldn't come to Aunt Evelyn's room. Hurt my soul. But uh, back to it. I was staying in Irvington with my aunt. I think it was Elmwood Play something like that. So, I ain't know nothing about moving. My Aunt Cheryl, I mean, my cousin Cheryl, Aunt Evelyn, stayed in this place. And they had Jamaicans either over top of them or under them. And they was the nastiest people. They had roaches all over the place. And I said, Auntie, I got to get you out of here, Auntie. The only thing my aunt would say, Tony, I just want you to get your feet. Auntie, I got to get you out of here, Auntie. Look at all these roaches, Auntie. So I got up. I just, I got, I was, uh, no, 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 before then, I went to, uh, I, call, what, I called my union hall. I just got the jury. I just went to my union hall. And I went to him and said, look, man, I need a job, man. So they gave me a job and I didn't have work boots. And I was working in Elizabeth, right there by the Ferrari dealership in Mac. I think it was either a Mac or a Ferrari dealership. It was building a school. So um, my cousin Cookie, um, she took me around the place. I said, no, nah. I said, uh, I just need how I just need to know I need to know where it's at. I'll get there. If I just sleep outside or sleep inside the machine, I'll be there. I said, Auntie, I'm getting you getting you out this house. She said, Tony, take care of yourself. I said, Auntie, no, I love you too much. To have you in a house full of roaches. I love you too much. So I went there. And I had to operate the dozer. I mean, the dozer, the, the, the backhoe, they reversed the hoses. Because I was used to a, uh, I think I was used to a Caterpillar setup, but they had a John Deere. And there was guys in the hole was doing pipes. I never forget it. So I told the guys, come out the hole. I'm not used to this setup. So they were sitting there like, he don't know how to run the machine. Within five minutes, 
I got it. So I'm in there working. They was trying to get rid of me, but didn't know how. So they, I, 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 I was running a dozer in this tight location. I didn't have on construction boots. I wait for my first paycheck because you know I didn't want to bother my aunt. My aunt, she was living in a house with roaches. But they asked me. I said, "No, I don't need your money." I don't need your money. I'm trying to get you out of here. So they came to me and said, well, we got to let you go because, you know, um, you got sneakers on. It's a hard, you got to wear construction boots. And the union BA came. I said, man, oh, I said, can you help me with, with some boots? I said, man, I, I done did everything for this union. I did everything, man. I'm, I'm trying to get money, man. I, I got my aunt living in the house with roaches. I got a daughter. I don't got nothing. So they took me off the uh, it took me off the job site. I got paid. I got my construction boots. I went back to the union down out of work list. All the guys that I used to know was either out working, but I remember the Prudential building. This was way after that though. No, not, not then. Um, no, that yeah, was way after that. Um, I was uh, I came back living on Elmwood over there by uh, what Clutch Diner, and this is the Irvington, close to Maplewood. And um, so the next day, you know, I got you know I got paid. Asked my aunt what she need, what she you know. She need, I went to the I know I bought groceries. I bought food for the house. I did I did everything I possibly could for the family. And uh I bought food. And um the next day I got up. I remember my uh my god brother Rocky, Rocky Barber. He used to talk about father and son moving. I was like, you know, he used to drive trucks. Rocky used to drive trucks. First time I got in the truck was with, was with Rocky and my father. My father shifted all 18 gears on a city street. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't nobody believe it. He went through all 18 gears on North 12th Street between 6th Avenue and 7th Avenue. That short little stretch of block. He shifted every gear. And stopped it. And I was amazed. Everybody was amazed. Even Rocky was amazed. My father used to do like heavy haul. He used to run machines and take the machines, pick them, you know, move the machines, all that. So it was in my blood. So I got up that morning. I, I, I walked from Irvington all the way downtown to uh, father and son moving. I had on shorts and I had on shirt. And I met a couple homies I went to school with. Um, um, yeah, and he was going out. And um, Donna, Donna and Frank, it was only father and son moving. They say, well, you want to go out right now? Yeah, I'll go out. It was the third floor. Walk down. Never in my life did move. So I'm, I'm, it was Dre. Dre. God bless you. I think Dre got his own moving business in Jersey now. So it was me, Dre, and another guy. And I got on that moving job. They put me on boxes. I had to walk boxes from the third floor all the way down to the truck. I did it. Dre said, man, you, you coming back tomorrow? I said, yeah, I'm coming back tomorrow. I said, if it's worth it, I'm coming. I'll be here every day. I was there every day, at least a half hour before they open up. So, um, the long distance driver was Billy Johnson, like a father to me. He uh, put me under his wing. I should do long distance with him. 
you know, of me, Tiny. I met all his sons. His sons just worked for Atlas. And uh, he, we was in North Carolina, I believe. You know, North Carolina or Georgia. The first pilot in Georgia, I think that's an international dealer. And we was going and looking at trucks. Uh, Billy was uh, looking for a truck for me to drive or to do moving. Because he said, uh, um, 